Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third event in our grad school series. This is about writing a personal statement, which is a very important part of the application process. So my name is Dr. Carla Marquez Lewis. I'm the director of the psychology program, and I will be your moderator for this evening. We also have a really great panel that's been joining us for all of our events uh, this fall. I'll go ahead and introduce them and they can um, wave or signal themselves um, so you know who they are. Uh, first, we have Dr. Tara Polini, who is the interim AD of Liberal Studies and the interim associate director of Gen Ed. Dr. Melanie Lorick, who is the associate director of sociology and HRL. Dr. Kathleen Kirk, who is a clinical professor in the Health Information Management Program. Dr. Patricia Bartley Danielli, associate a professor in the nursing program. Dr. Isabel Alicia, who is the associate director of the psychology program. Dr. Mariette Bates, who is the academic director for the disability studies program. Dr. Elizabeth Alsop, academic director for communications and media. And Dr. Edwin Knox, who is the academic director for the business programs. So thank you again for joining us. Um, we're gonna get started in just a moment. Just a few reminders um, about the event series. These are really designed to help you um, understand the process of applying to graduate school a little bit uh, better and to kind of peel away some of the mystique about things that students often don't know when they're beginning this process. And we wanna make sure that you're armed with information ahead of time so that you don't look back and wish you had done things differently had you had certain pieces of information. So that's really why we're here. We're going to present some information to you answer your questions. And then we're also going to move into breakout rooms so that you can see examples of personal statements that are specific to whatever discipline you're interested in. And also um, give you an opportunity to ask some discipline specific questions to these experts. So one thing to keep in mind, um, you're free to ask any questions that you have along the way and we'll do our best to answer them um, if we can throughout the presentation. Um, if not, we'll take them at the end. And then another thing to keep in mind is that if you look in the chat, um, you'll soon see a key that has different programs listed and um, a number. If you can change your name so that that number precedes your name, that will help us uh, know which breakout room you wanna go to later on. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So, one thing to talk about before we dive into personal statements is just writing samples in general, which are uh, a part of the process. So why don't we talk a little bit about what a writing sample is and why it's requested of candidates who are applying. And to take that question, we'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Polini first. Hi, everyone. Good evening. It's nice to see you all here tonight. Um, Right, so a writing sample is essentially, I mean, basically what it sounds like. <laughs> it's a sample of your academic writing. Um, and it varies, um, you know, what that sample looks like, how long it is, that varies from discipline to discipline. But really what it is, it's in a, a moment where you can show the committee, the admissions committee to whatever schools you're applying to, um, what kind of work that you do, what kind of written academic work um, you're capable of doing. And it will give them a sense of the kind of work that you might be able to do um, at a more advanced level in a graduate program. Um, so like, so for instance, in my field, um, which is English, um, I use my um, kind of like a capstone project that I did as an undergrad. It was, I think about, this is a long time ago, but <laughs> it was about 20, 25 pages long. Um, that's probably longer than what many of you will be doing it, but it, again, it depends on the discipline. Um, but that was a piece of writing that I had really honed. I had edited, I had gotten comments on, I had revised. Um, it, was, it was substantive and it really showed where I was at that point um, in my academic uh, career. So. Great, does anyone wanna add anything else about personal statements? 
Oh, sorry, I can talk about that too. Um, so, <laughs> so a personal statement is a little bit different than a writing sample because a writing sample is really an example of writing that you've done. So maybe for a capstone course, like I said, um, or for an advanced level course in your major. Um, but a personal statement is, is really a piece of writing where you get to talk about yourself. So you know when you apply to school, they're looking at maybe your GPA, um, the, the courses that you've taken, maybe exams, if um, the programs require them, they're looking at letters of recommendation. But the personal statement is really a moment where you can introduce yourself a, a little bit more as a well-rounded person and not just sort of numbers and information um, <clears throat> that you might get in a transcript. Um, so a personal statement can give someone kind of um, a little window into who you are as a person, but not just um, you know anything about you personally. It's gonna it needs to be related to what you're going to be studying. So you might talk about why you've chosen that particular field of study. Um, what are you, maybe your reasons for applying to that particular program? Um, <clears throat> why you think you might be a good fit for the program? And maybe a little bit about your background. So we're going to talk more about um, what you should and what you shouldn't include in that statement because there's a lot of uh, different parameters there. Um, but that's the difference between the two of them. Thanks. Thank you. And yeah, I want to clarify that the reason why we started with a writing sample is because the personal statement can sometimes act as a, a writing sample. Um, but then there are requests often for a separate writing sample. We just wanted you to be aware that if that is requested, that they don't mean the personal statement. They, they want something extra. And we just want you to, to be aware of what that thing is. Um, so in terms of writing samples, if we, if we stick with writing samples for a second, um, what should and shouldn't be used in a, in a writing sample? Um, Dr. Lorick. Yeah. Um, so as um, Dr. Paulina was saying, um, and I just, I looked at the um, Cornell website for sociology for graduate admissions, and they give a lot of detailed information. And when you look at it, they say the write, a writing sample should be a short paper that will help the admissions committee understand your analytic abilities communication skills and potential as a sociologist. Um, so the idea is, and that will be different for each program and you should look at what the program wants from you. That's the first thing you should do. Um, and um, most programs um, use that writing sample as Dr. Paulino was saying, to see whether you have the potential um, to be a successful student in their graduate program. So you wanna follow directions and you wanna make sure that your writing sample fits the directions that the graduate school you're applying for, the program you're applying for uh, meets these um, requirements. You wanna make sure that your uh, writing sample is polished, as polished as it can be. Um, what that means is that it should be at multiple drafts already. Um, it should have been read by somebody else who um, is either good or has some knowledge um, in the program you're applying for, or who just is sort of a, you know, somewhat a reader you, tr you trust who, you know, is, whose English is good and who can give you some feedback on how um, good that paper is. You want to spend a lot of time on getting this as polished as you can. You absolutely, and those my students, you absolutely must cite correctly. This is the moment where, <laughs> like, where, where, where it really, really matters. It always matters in every paper, but if you do not cite correctly in your writing sample, um, this will count against you quite a bit because the idea is that um, you're supposed to show that you can be. Um, you know, a graduate student who understands how to use evidence, right? And how to make their own argument by relating um, evidence and what other folks, uh, scholars have said to one another. Um, so you also want to make sure to a certain extent, um, ideally that your writing sample somewhat relates to the field you are applying for. Um, that can be difficult. Um, so, but, you know, I think ideally that would, be the case. What you shouldn't do is you shouldn't um, submit something that has been co-authored or collaborated on, some kind of group work. 
because uh, the admissions committee needs to understand what it is that you wrote. Um, and if it's group work, they will not see that. Um, yeah, again, don't submit a rough draft. Um, don't submit anything that has spelling errors, that doesn't have a reference list, um, that doesn't use one scholarly style. So use ASA style, use Chicago, use MLA, it doesn't matter, but don't mix and match, right? So all these, I teach that a lot. <laughs> I know, you know. <laughs> so yes, please, please use one style and stick to it and use it correctly. Um, and um, make sure um, that it has your name on it. So don't submit something that doesn't have your name on it, please. That's it for me. Great, thank you. A anyone else wanna add, Dr. Knox? I just wanna make sure uh, when we talk about citations that if you are writing a writing sample for a specific program, at least know what the citation, uh, um, style of citation that is used for a APA, certainly for business. I, I read a lot of papers and they have MLA there and that's because that's used a lot. But if you're writing it for a specific program, be very clear on what the uh, uh, citation style uh, is for that specific program. Dr. Polini, did you want to add something? Oh, I, I, sorry, I thought your hand was up. Um, no. Great. <laughs> so, so why don't we shift a little? Hopefully you have at least a little idea of what writing um, samples are, and let's focus on writing the personal statement. So in terms of what a personal statement is, it's important to understand the intent, um, which Dr. Polini talked a little bit about, but also the style and the format and who the audience is for the personal statement. So for that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Kirk, who can tell you a little bit about that, and then others can chime in. Hi, everyone. Well, over the years, I had the opportunity of sitting on admission committees, and I found from that experience that some grad uh, programs provided, uh, as Dr. Uh, Warwick said, specific instructions regarding the length of your statement. And sometimes they also asked uh, specific questions to be answered. So before you begin writing, make sure you understand what those requirements are. And I also found that some of the programs and disciplines had little or no direction provided and just simply asked for a personal statement. So if that happens, the general rule that you might want to follow is to submit a two to three page statement double spaced with one inch margins and 12 point uh, times new Roman font. While there are really no rules about length or format, that format that I just spoke about is typically considered appropriate. Because personal statements are, well, personal, <laughs> there is no one type or style of writing that's set out as that perfect model. But while every personal statement is unique in style, its purpose is the same. A personal statement is your introduction to that admissions committee. Think of it as the heart of your application. Your personal statement should include uh, an interesting story about you, your reasons for wanting to attend grad school in the field of your study, uh, why you would want to attend that particular um, institution, your future career goals, and I would include any relevant research or work experience. Remember the goal, you wanna capture the readers and those readers are your admission committee. And you want um, you want to make sure um, when you do capture them that they want to meet and select you. So get a sense of the experience and dreams you wanna share with them. Finally, when writing a personal um, essay or a statement, uh, as, as it was mentioned, it's hard and it takes many drafts and a lot of reflection. So before you begin, take a step back and just begin writing honestly. Great. Others? Yeah, could I add something quickly? Um, I was just talking to a student um, who applied for several master's in social work programs and just wanted to note that sometimes there's a 
quite a bit of variation even within a single type of degree. So one application required him to write a kind of more general statement of the type that Dr. Kirk was just describing, um, while another school asked for three separate essays responding to three very distinct prompts. And so, you know, that is obviously a, a, a lot more work. It would be nice to just have a single template you could kind of tweak, um, but do be careful to read instructions and tailor your um, responses accordingly. I mean, as in classes, right? Just really follow instructions um, and don't go, don't do any uh, off off-roading with that. Great. So as you're thinking about writing this, this statement, and we've talked about how important it is, hopefully we've gotten that across. Uh, Dr. Kirk has said, it's the heart of your application. That's a great way to describe it. It might be a little intimidating to get started on the process. So we want to give you a little bit of insight into where do you even start? Um, so Dr. Bartley Danielli will tell you a little bit about what you can do to get started and what steps you should take beforehand. Uh, well, I, I think I will reiterate a lot of what's been previously said, and the next workshop is going to talk about uh, the CV, but I think it would be good to um, get your ducks in a row and have the updated CV slash resume to kind of guide not so much a laundry list of your accomplishment and your academic achievements, but really reflect on where you were, where you are, and what are you looking at in terms of this degree program. And I would say in reviewing many of the applications, um, it's also what is your potential to, to contribute to your profession? Um, what will this degree do in terms of providing a foundation for you as a professional? And if you have that, have your resume slash CV there, again, not a laundry list, but it gives you the opportunity really to say, well, this is where I'm at. This is, I know where I wanna go. And when we look at the fit, um, the application then to SBS CUNY is your ability then to say, that um, you would be successful in the program, of course, with support, but also that you are goal directed. Um, as mentioned in prior, um, in, with prior faculty there, uh, there are uh, many uh, different types in terms of uh, directions, whether there is a word limit, whether you have to be very specific in your personal statement, and there may be add-ons. So in nursing, we ask for an evidence-based project, which is either a clinical project that a nurse would be involved or an academic project done usually in the last semester of a program. So you don't want to uh, miss those directions or also um, highlight um, peripherally uh, what are global um, goals for yourself um, that would be for any student? What really makes you unique? And um, going back to what was said about the drafts, I think a, midlight, a midnight deadline or the day before is not the time uh, to really just to get it in, but often you need that reflection to, to look back and say, oh, this is too wordy, or I didn't really answer the directions for the personal statement. And the more that you can edit and the more you could have someone look at it in terms of really making sure that you are following the guidelines for the personal statement, the stronger that personal statement will be. Dr. Polini. Um, I just would like to reiterate, uh, reiterate what Professor Bartley Daniele said. Um, by all means, please, please, please do not wait to the last minute to work on this. Um, it will, um, it will not serve you well. Um, someone put it in the chat. Um, all writing is rewriting. Uh, yes, said Dr. Also, absolutely. Um, and and these very high stakes um, pieces of writing. Um, so these are not things that you should do quickly and without thinking. Um, I would say take advantage of the resources that you have. So your professors are resources. Um, we have a writing, well, we have writing fellows here at SPS um, who serve as writing tutors. You can work with them. You can work with um, one of the fellows repeatedly on a piece of writing. Um, 
you know, if you have friends who you think who you trust and um, are good writers, you can ask them for help. But I would re really encourage you to plan out what you're going to say, do some pre-writing, do some thinking, um, outlining, drafting, you know, think about um, when you're the most, when you've been most successful at writing um, and follow that procedure. Thanks. Yeah, and I would also, you know, highlight what, what Dr. Polini mentioned about utilizing your professors. Um, you know, most of them, not all, but, you know, they're, they're certainly open to, to your request to review your personal statement, especially if there's someone who knows you really well. Um, when I was applying to graduate school many years ago, I, I gave it to my advisor and um, I was grateful for him saying, you're not really highlighting the, the things you should be highlighting. Um, and that was very helpful because it, it changed the angle with which I wrote it. So utilizing your professors, many of them have sat on admissions committees and they can tell you maybe what might be a better thing to highlight or a better angle to come from. So we've mentioned goals, um, that's come up a, a few times. And if you've attended any of the past um, events that we've had, you've heard the term fit come up a few times. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what role goals and fit play in the personal statement. And um, Dr. Alicia will, will help us there. Hi everyone. So one, if you are not new to the panel, if this is not your first time attending one of our events, one of the things you've heard is do your research. So come to this process prepared, having looked different things up. You should know what program you're applying to when you're writing your personal statement. Um, try to avoid making the mistake of listing the name of another program um, because that sets the wrong tone. That's the first thing. Uh, that sets the wrong tone. We understand that you're applying to multiple places, but we also expect you to be a little careful. And you should know, you know, what the expectations or the direction that program um, has is. So, for example, um, if you are interested in a particular perspective on psychology, you're interested in a more, um, you know, critical perspective on psychology then you know, one school might be right for you, but another school might not be right for you. So take a look, do your research, go to the webpage, see what kind of research the faculty who are there are doing, the kind of work they're doing. Don't assume that you're going to necessarily be working with the faculty, but assume you're going to be taking courses with them. And so that means that your inclinations should sort of fit those of the program. Take a look to see what the program's goals are. Do the, do the program's goals match your goals? Are these goals that you find interesting? Um, do the program's course offerings match your expectations of what you would like to do, what you'd like to take? And then there's a really important one. What is your end goal in terms of career? If you're planning on being a school psychologist, for example, a developmental psychology program is not right for you. An industrial organizational uh, psychology program is not for you. If you want to be a social worker, you need to be in an MSW program that allows you to get an LMSW. And you want to have certification because that matters in terms of where you can work, how independently you can work, and also your salary is partially based on what type of certification you have in social work. Um, and so you should look to see what the program offers, why it offers it, and in some cases, um, People often make the mistake like, of thinking that if they get into one CUNY school, all CUNY schools are open to them. That's not the case. We are individual entities. And while we share certain things and we're part of a larger family, um, we are different. And we have separate identities and separate orientations and separate uh, areas that we actually prepare students to thrive in. So for example, a psychology program at SPS, we have an industrial organizational program, and we also have a developmental psychology program. Those are fantastic programs that can prepare you for wonderful careers, but we cannot prepare you to right away get certification to be a clinician. So again, do your research, look to see what we prepare you for, why we prepare you for that, and in your statement, include the fact that you understand, you know, what you're signing up for, pretty much. Carla, we can't hear you. Oh, Dr. Bates. Do you have something you wanted to add? You, I saw you unmute. Okay. Um, that's because I got a message saying the host wanted me to unmute. So I did. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Sorry about that. Uh, you think after all these uh, months of, of Zoom, I'd remember to unmute. Uh, so one of the things I, I would add to, um, to piggyback off of what Dr. Alicia mentioned is that if you see a faculty member that's doing work that you're interested in, um, name them. 
um, and, and name their work. Um, when you're you're trying to help the admissions committee see that you're going to be a great student, but also that they can see you in their program. And so you wanna kind of create that, that picture for them by saying, you know, here's where I sit, here's where I might align. So you can help them along a little bit to see you as a member of their community. So in terms of a uh, personal statement, um, someone mentioned uh, earlier that it's, it is a personal statement. And there becomes this very interesting line about how personal. So to talk a little bit about uh, how much personal history to include, anything you should avoid, um, Dr. Bates um, will give us some insight into that. Yes, I guess that's why I was asked to unmute. Um, so, so again, this varies by program. Um, part of what is important, I think, is you're going to um, you're going to submit your resume with your application, but the history that you're giving in your personal statement is an opportunity for you to talk about the things that are left out of your resume um, that are important to you in terms of experience, but may not be appropriate for a professional resume that you are submitting. Um, in my program, which is disability studies. Um, Many of our students will disclose their history of um, with a disability, whether they acquired one and when they acquired one, um, and some of their experience. And that's certainly important to our program. But for other programs, there's a very fine line you walk between giving um, the admissions committee information about you and your history and essentially revealing personal information that the admissions committee really doesn't need to know. One of the things that I, I think that applicants should remember is that we're reading lots of applications and you're writing for a tired reader with very little time um, on this admissions committee. So, um, so we want to get to know you I want to, when I'm reading applications, I wanna get a sense of who you are. You don't have to be somebody else to go to graduate school. You can bring yourself and all of your experience, but you have to be selective about which of your experiences in your history are relevant to the program you're applying to and which ones the admissions committee really doesn't need to know. And that means that you need to be a very good editor and be able to step back and be a little objective about your own life and the things that you're revealing. Um, I think, for example, in my program, it's important for me to know uh, if you have experience with disability, either, either your own personal experience or as a parent or a sibling, but I don't need to know every developmental milestone along the way um, as, you know, as, um, as you write about your personal history. I need, I need you to hit the high points um, and, and to let me know um, that you're ready to study in this program and why, because you bring that personal experience. But for example, if you're applying to, to uh, Dr. Knox's business program, he wants to know about your experience with business, your personal experience with business, um, maybe how you entered, maybe some particular project that was meaningful to you that you learned on about something about that may not be reflected on your resume. That is the, the fact that you worked on the project might be reflected there, but not what you learned about it. But that's something he's gonna be interested in. Um, is, it's something that's relevant to the application that you're preparing. So, um, so it's a very fine line and you have to, when you're writing your personal history and your personal statement, um, really be a great editor. And this might be the time to give it to somebody who knows you really well, who, who will say to you, this is really important and relevant. The committee doesn't need to know this particular thing. And again, remember that you're writing for, for people that are tired that are busy and that want to help you, um, probably want to admit you to their program, um, but don't have a lot of time to read 
a lot of extraneous information in your personal statement. Thank you. So um, in the psychology program, we often get uh, personal statements that are deeply personal, uh, where someone is disclosing um, certain information um, that is confidential in many cases. And um, that can, on the one hand, it can help us to understand the person a little bit better. It can help us to understand certain hardships uh, in relation to academic performance. Um, but it can also sometimes, um, I guess, cloud the experience of reading the personal statement where sometimes you're so overcome with emotion that you, you know, are having trouble getting through this, the personal statement. Um, something to keep in mind is that you're not obligated to disclose anything personal. You don't have to disclose anything in regards to a disability. You don't have to disclose anything in regards to, to a psychological disorder before you get to a program. Um, you can disclose that in due time if it's relevant to your academic progress or if it's something you're comfortable sharing. You don't have to share if you don't want to share. And I think that's something to keep in mind as you write your personal statement. It doesn't necessarily help you. It won't necessarily harm you. Um, but, you know, it's important sometimes to maintain certain boundaries. Um, and then there are other times when it's important to explain why it is that one particular semester you dropped out of all of, of, all of your classes, you know, two weeks before finals or something like that. Um, so it's really a question of making a good choice. And I'm going to agree with my colleague, Dr. Bates, and say, go to someone else and ask, is this relevant? And um, another person should be able to give you some good advice. Yeah, and I would, I would just agree that it's not, it's not um, a requirement to disclose. And we also get in our program a lot of personal information. Um, but people, because it's about disability, people often do disclose. And um, and they should know that it's going to be confidential. Um, that we, you know, we respect those boundaries. Um, but this isn't about accommodations necessarily. It's 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 basically about life experience. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to reiterate that you want to distinguish yourself in some way, but you also um, you want to balance distinguishing yourself and sort of using maybe shock value or too much emotion, too much of a, a of uh, pathos uh, in, a, in a rhetorical sense. Um, and also um, you wanna try to avoid cliches, um, right? So like if you're applying for a master's of social work and you say you wanna help people, most people, you know, pretty much that's why, you know, we are kind of taking, I would assume the committee is gonna take that as a given, um, but you, how are you gonna distinguish yourself? In what way do you wanna help? Why? What makes, what makes you somewhat equipped uh, to do that um, and things like that. Um, and also you don't need to convince the committee that you are personally um, worthy of graduate study, right? Everyone is worthy of uh, and, and should be invited in some way to do advanced work. If that's what you wanna do, you have a, a right already, it's given. Um, so you don't need to convince the committee that you know, you're know you such an amazing person and you should be allowed to do this. Um, you Yes, you're all amazing and you should all be able to do graduate study if that's what you wanna do. Um, but the personal statement is it, you don't need to do that. Um, you know, um, you are qualified and it's a matter of explaining to the committee what makes you a good fit, what makes you a good candidate, why you're motivated to do this, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Dr. Asaf? Yeah, I just um, circle back a little bit to the theme of the tired reader. Um, so, you know, when you do mention, I think, personal experience, it's really helpful to very explicitly connect that to, to your goals, to your motivations. Don't assume the reader's just going to magically intuit it or that it's implicit. Make it explicit. Make our job really easy. Sort of walk me through it. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's often easy, I think, to just kind of like throw the thing out there and just hope that it will, it's, its importance will manifest. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think when you're reading a lot of applications, um, it's, it's, you, it's very helpful to have someone um, really kind of make those connections for you in a very clear and uh, explicit way. So in addition to the goals, um, the fit and the personal history that we've talked about, um, what other things should be in, Included or covered in the personal statement. Um, for this um, topic, um, Dr. Alsep and Dr. Knox are going to give us some perspective. 
Can I go first, Elizabeth, or either? Well, I was just talking. Why don't you go first, Ed? Then I'll chime in. Well, uh, I think it's it, it's very important um, that we understand clearly what your motivations are. Um, many times we're not clear what the operation is to be this, but how did you come to that? Uh, because I think when we can see a deep commitment to something, we know you're going to succeed through the program. Anytime I'm reading something, I'm trying to figure out what will make you stay the course. And it has to be personal. It has not it has to do with grades and the fact that you've done some type of work that we like. Uh, and it says that, okay, you're interested in business, but sometimes take a real deep sort of look at what the motivations are. I remember uh, reading uh, a personal statement of a graduate student going on to law school and they wanted to um, study a particular area of law. And this is where that issue of personal, um, what, what, what's too personal and what isn't, uh, she actually uh, observed an event that shook her at the core. And it was so significant to her that she wanted to, to sort of uh, uh, dedicate her to the and reading that statement knew that they were so focused on that, that if they got in that program, they were in fact going to stay the course and it was going to be they were going to succeed in this, whether they come to this program or to another program. And actually, uh, they ended up in a very good law school. But I remember reading that and thought to myself, wow, uh, not only am I motivated because I want to go do this, it's something that's deeply sort of driving uh, that. So when you start to look at what you're writing, look for those and lay that out. Now, the writing press process is highly iterative. So what you want to do is lay that out and then find a unique way to sort of blend that in. The other thing that I, I sort of look for is not only to hear about your experiences, but to discover who you really are and whether there's uh, something about your character that that comes across in, in, in that reading. Uh, again, creative on how you how you sort of integrate that, uh, what you say, the things you say, writing is very, very deliberative. Uh, so I would tell you to sort of lay that down. Does this particular statement help show something about who I really, really am? Uh, what you value, you know, what are your, what are your values? Uh, I know for when I'm reading, I, I want to know that you value uh, people. And, and serving people. That may be important, the servant leader, wanting to be involved, not just because you wanna be the boss and it's gonna get you more money and it's gonna get you more prestige, but just the fact that you like developing people, that you wanna be uh, someone who can go into an organization and pull people together for the best outcome of an organization. So think about what your value systems are and, and try to make the connection. Uh, many times you might be able to find this if you look at the program learning out. Uh, uh, program it says we are trying to put out into the world. If you see it's important in business that we put out ethical leaders, you, you know, uh, do you value right or wrong? Uh, those kind of things. So take a look at that. It's not just that you're gonna Put the information that's needed, your background, what it is you want to do and why you come to the school. Sometimes we need to get a sense of who you are. And I think your values, your motivation, and this uh, all provides us a sense of character and sort of sustainability of your commitment to the program. Great. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll keep it short so we can get into our breakout sessions, but I'm just going to come back to this idea of the personal statement as a piece of writing, right, as an actual example of how you write. Um, and it's a weird genre, right? Like a cover letter, like no one is born knowing how to write this genre, which is why I think it's really important as everyone is saying to start early, go through all your really bad drafts, right? Get those out of your system, show it to someone, go to a writing fellow. Don't feel bad if it takes you a long time, right? I mean, it took me ages to write personal statements. They have to be bad first. They really do. Um, you have to exercise all of that sort of stuff. Um, and you know what I always a couple of things I, I think is helpful is sometimes students feel like they need to make these really grand claims, you know, and like synthesize examples are great stories are great, you know, that's not the whole substance of your statement, but a really well chosen example can be extremely powerful and do a lot of the work that Ed was saying in terms of showing me about what you value and what has been meaningful to you. 
Um, also, short sentences, they're okay. You don't have to write a bunch of long sentences or use all the fancy words, right? Um, you really want to communicate with your audience. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's fine to be, um, you know, especially if you're someone that I, I think, you know, um, has struggled with writing in the past, don't think that you need a lot of big words to be an effective communicator. It's not true. Um, and, you know, one thing that I think is really when I'm revising a very high stakes piece of writing, especially a short one, read your writing out loud to yourself. It's a really good way to proofread. Um, your eye will totally just skip right over errors or missing words, especially when you've looked at a document for a long time. So reading out loud is a really good way to force yourself to, to catch any errors or like weird infelicities or awkward phrasing. So that's a little trick that I always encourage students to, to use. Um, so yeah, it's a piece of writing. Writing's hard, but just start early, show it to people, get help, um, and it'll be great. Another quick tip is read backwards, um, sentence by sentence, not word by word. That will make you crazy. Uh -huh. uh, but read, read the last sentence and then the second to last sentence, because what you're doing is you're taking it out of context. So you're not as easily um, distracted by the content and you can focus more on just the sentence and that helps you catch little errors that your eye can really glaze over. Yeah, and I think another tip sometimes is to make sure that you write the introduction last, <laughs> you know, because that's kind of the summary to some extent. So you want to read everything you've written and then go back and write the introductory paragraph to what you've just written, um, because then you can be concise and uh, and I think it will help your writing. Yeah, and I think we all want to save the trees, but it does help to print out your what you're you're writing, unless you want to put your you know. Sometimes if I'm writing on the computer, I put my finger over and I slide it as I read to make sure that I don't accidentally fill in blanks and miss words. Um, but it's good to have a, a printed out document that you're working with. Um, we want to wind down really just by talking about um, anything we've seen as people who've sat on admissions committees um, for many years, things that have been particularly effective or things that have been particularly problematic. Um, so I wanted to start really by talking about a, a couple of things, and I'll, I'll just do a couple sort of good things that I've seen and a couple of not so great things, and then um, I'll give uh, my other panel members an opportunity to share some of their own, um, aside from what they've already shared. So one of the things that I've seen that is not particularly effective um, goes back to something that Dr. Alicia was talking about, which is um, what you disclose. Um, sometimes the, the reaction can be emotion, which may be what you're trying to elicit. Um, sometimes it can be a very uncomfortable feeling, like, I, like I've been told something I didn't want to know. Um, and that is not the, that's not the feeling you want to elicit from people who are, are making these decisions and who are, are um, looking at, at your work. And I think one of the, the most uncomfortable feelings is that of guilt um, for uh, someone who's reviewing. So I've seen many statements that say, please, you'll change my life please let me into this program that is sort of pleading. Um, uh, and I, I think it's important to say that we all take the admissions committee work very seriously. Um, you know, when we're reading these, we know that it, it, it really can be such a life changer for people to admit them to a program or to not admit them. And so the weight of that is already felt. Um, so as Dr. Polini said, you don't need to plead. You don't need to, to do anything like that. You really just need to kind of make the connections um, for us and, and state your experience. And I think that comes off a lot better and a lot more professional. Um, another thing I would say is to not mix up um, personal experience with expertise. Um, so in a field like psychology, sometimes people will say, I suffer from a mental illness, therefore I know about um, a, B, and C. And there is a real difference. You, you can have personal lived experience, um, and then there might be a little bit of a separation from what the field itself actually is, or at least a subfield. So in psychology, for example, not everything is, is clinical psych. Um, not everything is counseling psych. Not everything is abnormal psych. So, um, and in our particular program at SPS, we don't do that at all. Um, so 
you know, it's good to, to tie your experiences and you can talk about them, but in the context of a lived experience, not necessarily an expertise on a field. That's why you want to go to graduate school is to kind of get, get the expertise. Um, some things that I've seen that have been really effective um, is detail. So Dr. Alsop talked about um, how powerful detail can be, and you never know what's going to catch somebody's eye. So give them information. If you worked on a research project, um, tell them about it. Um, I can tell you even in my own experience applying to graduate school, I, I was doing some work on um, eyewitness testimony was the and facial recognition at the time. And I wrote about just this statistical analysis we use called D-prime and not really thinking much about it. And when I got to graduate school, it was the first thing my advisor talked to me about and said, I was so interested to hear that you knew about D-prime. Not very many people know about it. Let's talk D-prime, um, which you know seems like such a strange thing for someone to hone in on, but add those details though. If you've used a specific analysis or you've done something really interesting, um, talk about it and, and highlight it for us. Um, and then the last thing I'll mention is um, something from your personal life that, that draws a reader in early, um, which, which was mentioned earlier, but it doesn't have to be shock value, but being creative with your intro and, and drawing your reader in um, right at the beginning can be a very effective way no matter what you're doing. Um, to capture your audience. And you want somebody to, you know, who's been reading these things to kind of perk up a little bit when they, they see your intro. Um, one of the, my favorite ones that I've ever seen um, was someone who was telling me about a dream. Um, it was very short, but, um, and I mean, I, I literally leaned in a little bit because I was wondering, where is this going? Um, it was, you know, it was so interesting. And then um, they tied it in uh, to what they were doing, but it was, it was a very powerful way to start something and so unique that um, I hadn't seen it done before and it, it made me really interested. So those are kind of a couple of things that I would mention. Um, anyone else? I just wanna piggyback on what you said. I think that, that the beginning is a, is a nice moment for some of the detail that Professor Alsop mentioned before. And it doesn't have to be shock detail. It can just be a detail about um, maybe a project that you worked on. Like I was, I'm thinking back to when I did my um, uh, writing sample for graduate school and I talked about, um, a, my project was about feminism and the writing center. And is there such thing as a feminist writing tutor? Cause that's what I did. I worked as a writing center tutor. Um, and so I didn't do this at the time, but uh, I could, I could imagine that I could have quoted maybe from some of the tutors that I had interviewed. Uh, and if that quote was directly tied to the project, which was then directly tied to why I wanted to go to graduate school, it would have worked. So you can do something like that, that will catch your reader's eye, but in a really, in a professional um, and appropriate way that doesn't always have to be like, I don't know, something like outlandish that is shocking to the system, you can still catch somebody's attention um, and be measured. Yeah. yeah. And I, um, I think one thing that we didn't maybe talk about, but that's really important is that um, we have students sometimes who apply and their GPA isn't quite a 3.0. And um, if your transcript shows that you had some issues in your bachelor's program, you need to address them in your, you need to address that in your personal statement. Don't just leave it hanging out there um, because people will ask, will wonder, well, I've noticed that, you know, in, in this particular semester, suddenly you withdrew from all your courses or you got less than, you know, less than Bs in your courses. Um, most of our programs look at applications holistically, but we need to know that you know that um, your GPA is less than 3.0 and that you need to address it, um, at, you know, about what happened. And, you know, we're all adults. We live in the real world. We've all had things happen to us, uh, you know. Um, relatives, you know, people get sick, they die, you know, your relatives die, your kids get sick, you're, you move, you lose a job, you get a job, whatever. Um, or maybe, you know, something else happened when you were in your bachelor's program. But it's important for you to tell us that and acknowledge that there was an issue 
um, and and don't just leave it unaddressed in your personal statement. So I, th I think I just want to make sure that 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 you know we address that. Okay. Well, thank you again for um, to the panel members and to all of you for listening to this portion. We wanted to open it up um, for your questions, and I think we'll take maybe two or three right now, and then we'll move into breakout rooms, and then you can ask um, those questions of your um, the leaders of those breakout rooms. So let's see, are there any questions that we have that were not answered? Okay, great. Then we'll go ahead and move to the breakout rooms, and then you can talk a lot more to the experts who are in your room. And again, thank you for joining us. And just a reminder, um, we'll put up our, our slide for the next event, um, which is our CV writing workshop. So we'll be talking there about what a CV is, um, how to write one, do the same thing as we're doing tonight, go into breakout rooms and show you what CVs look like in different disciplines and then help you to brainstorm um, how to write your own CV. So thank you again. Hopefully we will see you at the event on November 16th, but thank you for sharing your time with us. After the breakout rooms, feel free to, to um, go about your evening uh, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you.